and utilizing um, and and utilizing. How do you scale it? How do you find alliance partners that can take your methodology and implement it into corporates? I'm just thinking, just even for Next Tech, which is a training organization where we have eight PDMs, how do we basically include this methodology, Craig? I mean, you'd put your mind to it. How do we take this methodology and and implement it into the way we think and the way we do things at Next Tech. So every single time someone does a training program, the first thing that they would do is say, okay, let's do a map. Uh, that's why I'm working with Craig, because he's very wise. <laughs> he's been looking out to having this exactly. conversation I mean, with, with me. Craig, with, my, with my brains and Craig's looks will go a long way, Anthony. <laughs> As, as uh, an observation, paper and the capturing of, of, of these maps is, is done on, on, on paper. Um, I'm reminded that because of its earthiness, uh, a lot of this could be done just, by the way, on, on, on the ground, um, quite literally sitting around a camp, but, but with artefacts. Um, and whilst I'm not sure how that scales, Craig Saffin, <laughs> the, 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 point, the point really is uh, that there's an element of, of, um, of that thinking. And, and Dodson, I'd like to ask you if you've actually seen that in Africa, because they're very, very good at, at actually building these uh, kind of pictures on the ground. Um, and of course, then you look at the Aboriginal communities who do the dot pictures, which uh, can, can we just talk to some of those artifacts and, and whether, whether paper is the only way? If we talk about maps, we think Google Maps, <laughs> but uh, their maps are very different. Um, yeah, the way that people view their territory and their, their environment and the important aspects on it are definitely uh, yeah. different. Yeah. As, as Aboriginal people, we, we use storytelling as, as how, uh, and song lines, how to create a map. And we're positional navigators. So we use landmarks and um, colours and yeah. plants and animals as a way to make a, a map, a very visual map. Um, and we tell the stories of what happened in every place to have that, to, to make a really clear map. But it's all about a journey and a storytelling. Um, thanks for the inspiring presentation, everybody. It was really amazing and I love that this is slowly infiltrating all of the um, the ether space that we're all communicating to each other and it's all coming through through our um, focus and what I wrote down here was creating the ecology and how we create that ecology for um, the team or the organization or the community and it, it made it on such a deep cellular DNA level which I think somebody else I think Bill mentioned as well um, because that's what um, creates the resonance for us. And then Stephen beautifully put there the sharing goes into the background, and I see that as the, as the fertile field that provides the immersion and the emergence for everything to rise up. And I feel that, that if we trust on that level as well as the inner level, there's this this beautiful balance and, and dance that happens between, which is such an Indigenous way of being in the world and all this wisdom was so beautiful. Um, the, the weaving in the field and the weaving in our words and just the weaving of all of those aspects was really inspiring for me. So, and the natural aspects and Anthony, I'm really interested in, in um, coming to Mongolia at some point too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please do. I mean, I'm 71 yet next year, so I'm doing 710 kilometres over 71 days. And I'm going to have GER camps along the way for sort of 10 days so people can come on different parts of it with different themes. So, yes, please, uh, you know. Sounds like the perfect medicine the for most COVID cabin fever. Yes. And, and <laughs> no, Nola will be with us. So it really oh, will wonderful. be a conversation okay. around wisdom and what's important. Right, Nola? Yeah, I'm curious to hear, um, Anthony um, Dalton, um, I've, I've had, and, and Stephen, I had a uh, pleasure of listening to you before, and it, it's just amazing how it deepens the understanding and insights into your good work. 
Um, m my question is, is in, in terms of the next generation. So I, I spend um, some of my time at the moment looking at a couple of projects for, you know, for, for that age group, for, you know, sort of teens and, and, and around that, that age group. And it seems to me that we almost have to kind of shortcut the, the process of, you know, a rites of passage that we used to have and now in our society has kind of been dropped anyway. But like, what, what do you have in terms of your insights and your understanding about working with that age group? Because we don't have a lot of time to create very wise leaders in that age group because of all the problems that we're facing. So uh, We've just started with some schools in Dubai and in the UK, taking them through the five steps. Uh, looking at the trust wheel, Doubson's been working very closely on that one with me. Would you like to say what, what we've been doing? I mean, yeah. we started with 11-year-olds and finding it absolutely fantastic. I would imagine. It, it, it's been great so far. Um, and, and also, um, sometimes you, you indeed wonder, like, how come that, that in all these years in their school, we, we were talking to 17-year-olds uh, this week, in the past few weeks, that nobody uh, asked them before to think about what, who inspires them, who are people who contribute, um, and also to think a bit beyond their their next university uh, or wh whatever path they take. But we talked about power, wealth, and status, and what it means as first primary reaction. What do we think that it means? But if you look at it from the perspective of power of personality, wealth of life experience, and the status of contribution, then who have that? And how would that, you know, guide your journey in life differently if that were important? And these kind of conversations we're having with them, um, and it's all remotely, we're, and we're like almost 200 students, so it's not, not very easy uh, interactive-wise, but it's super, super important and, and fascinating. Well, the, the lack of it being taught is quite extraordinary. I'm sure, Nola, you find the same, don't you? Yes, I, I run an Aboriginal education company called Cracker Jack Education and um, been working in this space for eight years. And um, one of the things that um, Aboriginal people absolutely um, say is crucial to all education is an understanding of their local environment and everything that lives above and below the ground and what the relationship is between all these things. And without that, you actually can't be educated uh, or, or supportive in a community. So we, we, that's strongly, you know, our number one thing. But we also look at um, understanding each other and difference behaviours and how to build empathy across when a behaviour doesn't look the same as yours. Uh, so it's, yeah, that's really the two critical things that we focus on and, and just that taking strength um, from the relationships in your local community so that you never feel alone. Uh, once you have totems and you're connected through those strengths, you're never alone. And, and this is, works really well with young people because they're very, very much feeling isolated and alone. Wow. Yeah. Oh. Let's see. Hi, Diana. Nice to see you. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Look, it was a great presentation. Um, I come from an Indigenous background. We were the great navigators of the sea. So our concepts and our song lines also run through the whole of the globe. You'll be amazed that song lines exist in Switzerland, in Spain, Canada. So we are connected through this globe. Um, so I really enjoyed it. Um, it's what, what I practice every day in my business. So as you know, Craig, I am a believer and I work on a different consciousness so and a different frequency, which is great to see that this has put some kind of framework around it. My question is because... We have had a lot, of, especially our sacred knowledge, um, taken from us, right? So when we're in business and what I find, because we have a collective process to co-create, um, what, and what I find is that there is an element where somebody who works in the purely fiscal consciousness 
will come in because they have billions of dollars and take. And so there's got to be something around our protection of this sacred knowledge and of this um, higher consciousness. So if that could be, I'll just table that. Um, but I, I would also encourage, <laughs> I would also encourage that this has been given to the younger generation. The younger generation are all on board, to be honest. I worked on something with the Synergized Earth Network and we corporatized the Waka knowledge um, and how to navigate corporations and they're on TEDx and all of that stuff. So so a big uh, supporter of what you're doing um, and I love the framework. So um, just including in the framework, there's something I thought the sacredness and the spirituality because when we're doing decision making, I always check with my spirit guides and with the elders to ensure that we're on the right path. And if they don't know, they usually go out bush and they'll sing, they'll sing it. And then they'll come back and say, okay, this is what you need to do. So um, it's not in this framework, but I think we need to honour our elders and our master knowledge holders, who is really our, our consultants. <laughs> So that's all. And ben, all right. No, yeah, keep uh, going. I loved it. It was great. Thank you. Thanks, Craig, for inviting me. Yeah. If I, could make, one, yeah. If I could make one very quick comment on that one. Yeah, the spirituality side of that, I keep well away from it because <laughs> it can get so deep and I don't really believe it's within my rights to do it. So what I'm trying to do is to look at the practical values, you know, tribes in Africa, female, you know, there is so much going on that we're trying just to look at the clarity and what we can take out of it without any of the judgmental. But this is where I think this is why we'd love to work with yourself, with Nola, with other people who can talk with authority about it. Otherwise, it's secondhand and I feel completely out of my depth. Well, there is something called the frequency. You talk about energy anyway. Yeah. And if you get into a higher consciousness, it's all about the frequency that you exuberate. So 432 megahertz is one of them and how you, you increase that frequency in your crowning. So you don't have to believe in like, I've got to believe in God or the creator, but you can believe in, in looking at the energy and the connectedness of that energy at a higher frequency. And that's how we connect that, with other that's, people. That's the golden sentence of today. If anyone can remember anything, remember 432 megahertz, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very no, good. I, I, think, I, think you're, I think you're right because there is the frequency in organizations and frequency in people. And I've just heard the touches of it and you've touched it again. Someone talked yes. about it a couple of weeks ago. It's something I know nothing about. I don't know whether oh. Dabs and you know anything about it. It's, well, it's where, you, it's where you, spirituality and science intersect. And basically it's where like it um, it's all about resonance and dissonance. And uh, yeah. it's, a, it's a whole rabbit hole, so I'm going to shut my mouth there. But yeah. that is the key that will unlock everything. If, if I may be just somewhat controversial for a brief moment, um, the, world, the world at the moment is, is seeking to go to the, to the stars as we head off to Mars and, 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 and do that there, how does that fit into this journey? Um, as in leaving, is, is that too far-fetched for, for this thinking? Or is in fact, is it actually contemplated in this thinking? We, we, you know, we, we're seeing huge, huge endeavours to kind of look up there and kind of go, well, can we become travellers through this bigger um, universe? Uh, it's, it's, it's a big question, but, you know, it's... it's what, any thoughts on that? As long as it improves the greater good, then that's fine. But does it? It's just I, I think there's a reversion to wonderful wisdom, but but purpose is 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 also kind of future looking as well in some respects. And the ambition. That's true. Of some... that's true but uh, Nala's, Nala's premise, and I think that this also comes back to um, what uh, Anthony and Dutton are talking about, and that is about collectivism and or uh, forming communities. And the greater good. So, yeah. is, and that's what Nara just said: is, is as long as the initiative is is inclusive, and and is contributing to the uh, the greater good rather than just to an individual being able to uh, beat their chest, then that's probably um, one of the first uh, measures. Or is it because we think this earth we've ruined, and we've got to go look for somewhere that we can survive in the thing? All of those are not good reasons. 
Oh, I totally agree with that, Nova. That if 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 that is the if that is the justification, it's right. Hey, well, it's not right. It's just that it's just that it doesn't make sense. Uh, I well, mean, I remember. I would, sorry, sorry, please. Uh, I remember drawing a map of a journey, and the thing is, it was just of the same mountain. And somebody said to me, "Why you're not going on a journey?" And I said, "That's because the mountain needs to be repaired. Sometimes you have to repair your own mountain." right? Your, your journey is not going somewhere else. Your journey is to stay and protect that mountain and to revive yeah. that mountain. So sometimes the journey isn't going anywhere. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I would say going to space is about as pointless as me climbing a mountain. I mean, it's sort of, it's a nice idea. Can I do it? And I think that's sort of it. Um, so yes, Thank you, that's everybody. fabulous. I'd love to learn more and I'll check out the megahertz. <laughs> so much. Hey, uh, Stephen well, Dotson and Anthony Nola, thank you very much. You're a rock star. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, Brian. Hey. Thanks for sticking your neck out. <laughs>